Sophia Pansini, Lillian Lassner, Anna Cervantes, Joshua Miller, Eugenia Kaltis, Lila Loria, Tommy Rasgani, Alexandra Paul, Abby Schenker, Jasmine Sizer, Mason M. Zoom, Sophie Katari, Natalie Naranjo Alvarez. My first name is Sebi. My last name is Schoenfeld. Jake Fields. Daniel Davis. Kennedy New. Eric Miller. Ian Mayers. Sarah Casanova. Jonah Raboy. Ryan Witz. Logan Matson. Ella Bahari. Alexa Maldonado. Kat Kelly. Molly Isabella. Today is May 9th. May 11th. May 11th. 2022. 2022. 2022. I'm a senior. I am a senior in high school. I am a senior at Fox Lane. I am a senior at Fox Lane High School. I am a senior. What is a movie you feel defined your four years in high school? The Notebook. Probably Harry Potter, actually. It's not a coming of age movie, but like Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Like I'm really obsessed with it. I think about it all the time. So like, I guess it defined my high school career. Dune. High School Musical. High School Musical. High School Musical 3. Mean Girls. Not like because of like Mean Girls itself, but I feel like it like captured the like phases that everybody goes through with like friends where you like you have real like where you find your real friends where everybody goes through that like moment in high school their switch. I would say The Breakfast Club because I think that at high school I've like became friends with so many different groups of people and that movie is kind of like the five kids and they're from all different backgrounds. So I feel like that's what I would say. Princess Bride. There's a movie called Stand By Me. It's from my dad's era. And it's basically these three boys and they're just adventuring and, and they have no, their biggest worry in the world is like who's gonna find the treasure first. And like I wish it was simpler and less drama and less social media. There was no social media obviously in the movie and that's what I wish looking back it was like. But Mamma Mia, it's my favorite movie. Maybe Talladega Nights. This might be an odd choice, but Memento by Christopher Nolan, because in the movie, the scenes go backwards, scene by scene. So you start where you ended off, but don't know how you got there. And that kind of is what high school feels like. It feels like just kind of ended up places and I have no idea how I got there. I feel like my experience has been very similar to The Edge of Seventeen. Oh, um, 21 Shop Street. <laughs> Inception. Um, it's a great movie by like all means, but like it's so confusing. And I feel like that's really what like my like, I'd say the first three and a half years of high school was just extreme confusion. And then the last like quarter of high school, I was like, oh, this isn't that bad, you know. Not as much a movie as, as two directors, um, Wes Anderson films and Dennis Villeneuve uh, films. I feel like the way they do their films kind of, uh, the way, it, the phrase picture, a picture is worth a thousand words, I often am like, fucking like, no it's not. Um, but the way they shoot their, their, their movies, uh, every frame is so carefully calculated and so descriptive. And um, I kind of like translate that into my music, because I'm, I'm a musician, it's like not a big deal, but um, I try and like factor that into my music that every instrument has a purpose. Between Heathers and Beetlejuice, neither of them really speak to like my high school experience. I just watch those movies every year in high school, and they're like the only two movies I've really watched. Surf's Up. It's the animated Penguin movie from 2007. <laughs> It's just so much fun, and it's all about overcoming obstacles and achieving your journey by just going with the flow and trusting other people who are wiser than you and knowing that you are meant to do something. Maybe how to be single, but all jokes aside, I would say the perks of being a wallflower, and I think that not everyone understands that everyone has been a wallflower at some point or another in high school. So yeah, I think that would define pretty much everyone's high school experience at one point. Uh, Shawshank Redemption. You know, uh, Andy Dufresne, uh, one of his first days in the jail, he got like this little tiny like rock pick, you know? 
And I feel like the first day of him being in jail is like kindergarten for me. And then I was just like hacking away at the wall for like from kindergarten all the way until junior year. And now, now I'm just so close. The wall is completely, it's completely drilled through. It's been 20 years, you know. Um, and, uh, you know, all I got to do is get the rope, you know, bring it out, climb down, crawl through the sewage pipes, and now I'm home free. You know, I feel like, I feel like that's a good uh, movie to represent my, not just high school experience, but just school experience as a whole. I just wanted to get the heck out of here, and that's what I'm doing soon. How about a musical album? Hmm. Cleopatra by the Lumineers. Don't Smile at Me by Billie Eilish. You know I'm gonna say this is a Feverger's Punisher. Gutter Flower by the Goo Goo Dolls. American Beauty by The Grateful Dead. Sob Rock by John Mayer. Three Cheers for Sweet Revenge by My Chemical Romance. One of my favorite artists, Mac Miller, has an album called Swimming, um, which I thought kind of defined my high school in four years because of the kind of the difference in how he sings and the difference in tone. There are a lot of songs that are mellow and kind of talking about his like self-realization and depression. And then it moves on to him realizing his happiness and kind of becoming a better and happier person. Maybe Sour by Olivia Rodrigo sour because that was extremely popular for so long. A little cheesy but based on mostly the name and I guess kind of the content. Graduation by Kanye. One of my favorite uh, um, albums and one of my albums that I think would best describe me. I don't know describe me but it's uh, called Roots by Sepultura. 333 by Tinashe. Folklore. Taylor Swift. Speak now, Taylor Swift. Like anything from Green Day. I don't know. I, well, I also love Green Day, so there we go too. <laughs> In terms of like rap and hip hop, I would definitely say The College Dropout by Kanye West. Um, and then for an R&B album, Blonde by Frank Ocean. I mean, that album really pulled me out of a, a dark place. And then as far as like a rock album, In Rainbows by Radiohead. Willow. Um, Lately, I feel everything. I know like Willow's canceled, but like before she was canceled, I downloaded that album and it just spoke to my soul in a way that a lot of other music hasn't. I'll just say fine line because I love Harry Styles and a lot of things have crossed some fine lines in high school. I'd rather say Time, Tequila and Therapy by Old Dominion just came out this past year and it's all about just letting go of grievances and moving on with your life and not holding grudges on things that don't matter. How about a TV show? Oh my God. To go with One Tree Hill, it kind of set up what I thought high school was gonna be like, and to be honest, it was nothing like One Tree Hill at all. One Tree Hill? Maybe Gossip Girl, unfortunately. Minus like the New York aspect, but Gossip Girl for sure. Gossip Girl. Um, oh, I said Euphoria because, not that my life is anything like Euphoria. Don't, don't think that it is. Um, but because I feel like like, besides from what happened in the actual TV show, I feel like it, like, it was a big thing where there was literally, like, peer pressure to watch Euphoria. Like, everybody had to watch Euphoria, like, while we were in high school. And then also, um, though, you know the way, have you watched it? The way it's filmed is, like, everybody has their own little look into their life. And I feel like that's what it is like in high school. And you have to kind of understand that everybody has their own separate life that you don't know about. I would take Lee. Glee. I'm just gonna say Queen's Gambit, mainly because the uh, main character uh, represents, uh, you know, reminds me a lot of my uh, best friend, uh, who um, unfortunately she took her life in December. The Office. I think it'd be The Office. Gilmore Girls, <laughs> for sure. I live in a um, all-girl household with my mom and my sister, and um, a lot of the time. Things are silly and funny and not formal, so I feel like my four years of high school were a lot like the relationships in Gilmore Girls. How I Met Your Mother, easy. 
Vampire Diaries because I've definitely watched The Vampire Diaries at least three times during high school. And yeah, I'd probably say Vampire Diaries. Shit's Creek. <sighs> Community. Cobra Kai. Outer Banks. WandaVision. Definitely WandaVision. Only because like in quarantine, I definitely like made my own reality, I guess. Like I was like doing what I wanted to do and learning new things about myself and I think that one division she basically did the same thing you know she just had magic powers or whatever but I would say it's always sunny in Philadelphia because it's just a bunch of stupid people doing stupid things for fun what clique or social group would you say you were or are a part of Definitely like the miscellaneous group. Like I don't find myself to be a part of any group. I kind of just like bounce back and forth between people, which I think is probably better actually. Currently, I would say I'm not part of any social group and I'm actually really proud of that. I feel like I'm always in the middle. I don't feel like I belong anywhere to be honest. I feel like I'm all over the place. Like sometimes you'll see me with this group and then the next day you'll see me alone but then i don't know i just like i like to be with everybody like i don't mind what kind of people i surround myself with just as long as i like them and they like me i don't think i was part of a clique um like i had a couple people who i did things with and like i would sit with but like i never really felt like i was identified with them like i guess i was thought of as being one of the nerdy ones. I'm definitely with the science nerds. I got it, my C Wing fellas. I'm definitely <laughs> I'm definitely there. I would say the science research kids, that's my thing. I would say I more bounce around different social groups because I used to play sports and I know a lot of kids from a lot of different social groups. So I think throughout my four years I definitely switched friends a lot. I think I was trying to figure myself out through other people and I wasn't really paying attention to what I wanted to be. I was trying to join different groups and see if I fit in there and then determine whether or not that was who I was supposed to be. I mean, I'm an athlete, I do theater, I do music, academics, so I kind of went everywhere, but I think that was good for me. So for all of high school, I had the same friend group, except for this past year. So I was with, I'll just say names. So it was <laughs> Colette, Sabrina, Nicole, and then, yeah, so it was us four. And then we were friends since like end of middle school to high school. And then I had a few friends like come in and out, and a few friends outside of the circle. And then recently I kind of left that group and now I have just like one best friend, which is like all you need. And then a few like obviously friendlier acquaintances and stuff, but yeah. Hard to say, I'd say like, most of the people I, ha I hang out with are from the track team, so maybe that. Ooh, I'm gonna feel so shallow answering this, but maybe like the athletes, I guess. Um, I was pretty much with the same group of girls and guys for all four years of high school, um, but it was pretty much me, Jasmine, Nicole, Ibby, Morgan, Liz. Um, that group, we pretty much stayed together since middle school and on, but I would say, yeah. I think we would qualify ourselves as like athletes, like some outgoing group of girls. I think like all my friends like play sports, so like athletes, I guess, and then also I do go out a lot, so like that, but I, I yeah, so probably those two cliques, but I also like have completely different friends in school, so I have like school friend, like more academic based friends. And I also like, I'm in chamber choir, so I have all my chorus friends. Um, so I feel like my main like cliques or friends are like athletes and party go out people. And then, but I like, I fit into other groups as well. Um, I would say I'm a part of, I mean, I, <laughs> I would consider myself to be part of more of the popular kids, but I also, I don't really, I don't like see myself as a popular person. I just feel like I'm like, I don't know, based on, I don't think there really are cliques or social groups at our school, I think. Like I, but I kind of see everyone as the same person, but I feel like middle school and middle school, there definitely were cliques and social groups. 
and I feel like that's where those were made and the labels were made and I feel like some people have stuck in those same kind of groups so I have stuck in what was called the popular group in middle school but I just consider myself like if I saw someone who is friends or like in the theater or athlete kind of social like yeah social group I would think of that as just another trait of themselves like they are a th like they like to do theater or they like to do sports but yeah I would I would think I think I would consider myself part of the popular group I think I mean I definitely wasn't in the popular clique and I wouldn't say I was in like the like I guess jock clique um but I mean I did do varsity sport um, I started in like seventh grade and I always thought in middle school that I would be part of the popular clique because I would know like I knew a lot of high schoolers like still being in middle school but I think like once I got to high school I would just like I didn't really care about like those like popular things and like um, having a big friend group like I just remember like sticking um, to like the people that I thought were real and that I could embrace like my true self with so I would probably say that the clique that I'm I mean, it's kind of hard to describe. I think I would say I'm like in the middle of like the Hispanic clique, but I also get along with people who are like in other cliques. Um, oh, I hate this question because like in our society, I feel like there aren't the like stereotypical cliques as like the athletes and the popular kids, stuff like that. Um, I'd say I was definitely more with the typical athletes, um, especially outside of school, but inside of school I like to hang out with basically everyone. Um, like the first half of high school, like definitely like the theater kids, um, but nowadays I would say it's not like necessarily a stereotype. My friends are just like, like Hispanic girls that are nice to me, so. The theater kids. This past couple of months, I'd say theater kids, because that's like who I've hung out with for the majority of the last couple months. I mean, I hang around the theater kids a lot. Um, I wouldn't say I would define myself in any clique. I think maybe other people grouped me in with Maybe like the band kids because I was in band, but I don't know if I would put myself in a specific clique. I was just kind of friends with selective individual people. And there were, I don't know if I would say there was one specific group that I was a part of. I would like to say none but um like realistically speaking i would probably say at the start of high school i was like it definitely ran in the music crowd and then just as kind of people in that social circle drifted away from each other we're all still friendly obviously um me and my closest friend daniel davis whom i hate with every fiber in my body uh we kind of found a new friend group um i i don't i wouldn't say that we are any specific clique um, but it's just, you know, it's a really nice group of like 10 or so guys. All of them are great. Um, collectively amongst the like 12 or 13 of us, I'd say we have five brain cells total. <sighs> Probably the huncho football men, the guys who wear football pads and leather jackets to school and always carry around the extra bag, I'd say it's part of that group. The stereotypical group, um, I believe freshman year, like I would, freshman year I went to a different school, but I, I probably hung out with like the, you know, the kids that partied first, you know, those kids that, you know, uh, the kids who thought they were cooler than everybody else, like from freshman to sophomore year, just because no one else was, not sophomore year, but like freshman year probably. Um, you know, I look back at that and I was like, oh my gosh, like, what a douche, like what a douche. Like I, you know, I thought I was uh, better than everyone just because I started putting toxins in my body before them, so. 
none of them, but like all of them, only because I feel like I just knew a lot of people and a lot of people knew me. So I just found it easy to just talk to all kinds of people. I never really like stayed in one spot throughout high school. I can't even say that I had a concrete friend group my entire years, all throughout my years of high school. But I'd say I was a little bit everywhere. I don't really think I had one because my friend group or like, I didn't really have a friend group until this year because I was friends with everybody. And a lot of my friends all did different activities. So I was like friends with people who did sports, friends with people who did theater, friends with people that did other stuff. So I would say I wasn't really part of any. Nope. I, I tried, I tried to make that work, did not work. How do you feel like people perceived you? Honestly, I don't know. I'm completely unsure. I don't know. I, I, w I wish I could step into people's eyes and see. I've, I've always wanted to know that. I think people think that I'm nice. Um, I think they think I'm loud. <laughs> I laugh a lot. So they either think, so a lot of people either think I'm smart or a lot of people think I'm dumb because I laugh so much that it might make me seem dumb. But I do think a lot of people think that I'm smart and athletic. People definitely, I would say that people think I'm athletic because I'm always doing sports. A lot of people don't understand me. Um, I'd say that like a lot of people just don't Sometimes I feel like discrimination does play a role in like the people like the way people perceive me um, And there's like a lot of like stereotypes in a way um, I think that people tend to think that I'm not capable of doing certain things like especially especially in school um, when I was in middle school, I couldn't answer questions. Like I remember I was in like little groups, like they would put us in groups of people and I was never the one answering the questions. I never really did the work because I didn't understand a word the teacher was saying. So um, like people just see me as like somebody that doesn't try in school, but I, I really try. Um, but I think overall I was perceived as a very bubbly person. Um, smiling always, um, you know, always did my schoolwork. I was, you know, took rigorous classes and things like that. I, I was very shy most of the time, um, mostly kept to myself, but these past um, two years I've branched out a little more. A lot of people knew me from the announcements. That was kind of like my, like everyone heard my, my voice every morning, so that was kind of fun. That was one of the, more, the most fun things I did this year, or this High school. Usually the one with the book, because I was always reading. I think people would see me as confident, because I think I can be confident and hopefully nice and approachable. Um, I think there's been a lot of negative stuff, especially like the first three years, two years. Um, like presenting masculine and like presenting queer, people don't really like that and you know. I feel like generally there's been a, like a lot of negative views of me. For the group, I feel like it's like partiers, which is bad, but I, there's not much I can do to change that because I do like to go out, so why not? Um, and then I feel like maybe more like when I was younger, probably they perceived me as like an asshole, but I feel like it's gotten better. Well, if I'm being 100% honest, I think someone, I mean people like, kind of generalized me as like the girl of a guy like um my ex I was with him for a really long time we were like on and off and on and off so I think I'm more considered as like oh yeah that's his girl and blah blah, blah which is like annoying to me now but like before I was like I understood it definitely at the beginning I was not that nice to people <laughs> um I've become a much nicer person so I think people would appreciate that. Um, I think I also grew up, which like matured and grew up, which helped. Uh, so I think people liked me throughout high school. I would hope so at least. Probably weird kid who doesn't stop talking. Quiet, shy. Um, some people say scary. I've had someone come up to me and say, I thought you were gonna be so mean. I was like, that's interesting. <laughs> Unfortunately, I feel like a lot of people were scared of me. Like I've heard people say that I'm just like so scary. And at times I would take that as a compliment because I would 
consider intimidating and scary like synonymously, but sometimes it kind of hurts because <laughs> I never want to make that impression that I'm scary or unapproachable or intimidating because I'm just like any other high schooler in school. Um, I got a lot of scary. People always told me that they were scared of me. I got a lot of, I walk like I own the room, which is something I don't feel like I'm doing, but I just, I, I guess it kind of is like natural to me to outwardly look confident because it makes people more confident in like my abilities. Um, I got a lot of negative stuff. Like people would say that I was like too progressive or that I was like offensive in a ways with my ideas and they didn't particularly like how I, was, how I was expressing myself, like if I wore specific clothing that people weren't into. But I also got a lot of like unique and independent, which was very good to hear. I think people perceive me as outgoing. I have a thing where I just don't know how to shut the hell up. Um, I think sometimes I've been mysterious. Um, there have been times when I went completely off the map and like no one would know where I was. I, cause I, I have like this weird thing where I'll like, I'll be a good communicator and stuff on my phone, but then like, I'll just go off the grid. I'll just forget to text people for a very long time. It's a bad habit. I feel like, like from my perspective at least, sophomore year me before we went into quarantine is not senior year me when we came back from quarantine. So maybe in the beginning of high school, I'd say I was a lot more, I'd say people would see me as nicer only because I wasn't as honest, I think. So people would see me as nicer only because I wasn't, I don't know if I wanna say I wasn't telling the truth all the time, but I would definitely say things to make other people feel better, even if that's not how I really felt. And now I'm kind of more honest and open with people, so they really just, you know, now I kind of just talk and just be who I am, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not really sure, because I've always been the kind of person who um, I kind of just, I don't know how to describe this, like change how I am when I'm around different people. So like if, so like I've had a lot of, diff I guess, been friends with a lot of different people in different friend groups. So I guess just people's perception of me might have changed when I'm with um, certain people. Mm, I p say people perceive me as to be less caring because of that like stereotype. So people think that you're all like the meathead, like just lifting weights kind of person, but there's more to that. I feel like a lot of people perceive me as like the stereotypical, like Asian who like studies, really studies, is very hard on herself. And granted, these are all true, but um, I think that's how a lot of people see me. A lot of people see me as um, kind of that stereotype of um, being smart, being, working very hard, yeah. I think people thought I was just like, kind of nice, kind of quiet, in the beginning, not quiet, okay. I think people thought I was just kind of, I think I'm friendly, and I think people think I'm friendly, and I think people thought I was very smart, because I tended to like focus a lot on school, and then as I kind of got more comfortable in high school, people kind of saw the other side of me of being more social, and more friendly, and more kind of talkative, because I think people definitely know I'm talkative. To be honest, Raw, I, like, okay. <laughs> like, gay. People think I'm gay, <laughs> to be honest. Which, like, it doesn't bother me, but, like, that's, like, like, so many times I've heard when I make a new friend, they talk to me, they're like, I thought you were gay. And I'm like, nah. And they're like, yeah, no, now that I'm talking to you, but, like, I thought you were. Um, that's probably how people, but other, other than that, loud and probably a little obnoxious. Do you feel like you had any defining friendships? Oh, absolutely, 100%. I think all of my friendships individually defined me as a person. Yeah, I actually do. Um, my, like, I only had like my best friend, um, Byleth. <laughs> she 
She's been my best friend since sixth grade. Yeah, definitely. I've been friends with my friend Marjorie for all four years. Um, and I hope that I'm friends with her, like, beyond that. Like, we've been friends since we were kids, so. Yes, uh, a few. My friend Amy, Melanie, both helped me get through some really tough times. I have three very, very close friends right now. I would say Alex Griffin, day one, has always been my best friend and will probably always be my best friend. She's more like family than she is a friend, in my personal opinion. Like, she's my rock. Um, and then I would say Liv Hodgson and Sophia Pansini, those two girls. I got really close to Sophia this year. I've been best friends with Liv since I was, what, like, 11? So I would say Liv Hodgson, Sophia Pansini, and Alex Griffin are my probably top three. I had a bunch of defining friendships. I, um, I went through a lot of, you know, best friends. I don't, that wasn't my intention, but things just happened that way. But I think I've finally, during my senior year, found a group of people that I really connect with on a deeper level. and. Um, I figured out that I enjoy more wholesome things rather than stereotypical high school partying um, and I found a group of people that can give me that. Absolutely. Uh, I did Assassins with Lila, that was definitely really like brought us together, was, we were, made us really close. Um, yeah, no, I definitely did. Lila, for sure. Like, I have gone through really rough times recently. I, I don't know if I could have gone through that without her. She is like my adventure buddy. We do pure things together. We write poetry together. Like it's just so pure and I've never had a friendship like that before. And so I'm, I'm gonna remember that one forever. I have four very close, five very close best friends. One goes to boarding school, but at my school, I have four best friends and we have been best friends pretty much since middle school and now seniors in high school I never thought that I would still be best friends with them now because I remember going into high school I'd he always hear how people don't stay friends and there, we were definitely a bigger group when we came into high school and have divided and separated and but now I have four really close friends that I really think will be like at my wedding and that I'll be continuing to reach out to and talk to for pretty much the rest of my life because I really could not picture high school or my life without them because they have shaped me the, to be the, pers w the person I am today. Definitely. Um, when I was like freshman, sophomore year, I had a super tight knit, like close friend group. And I'm still friends with them, but like not as much as we were because we were just like so, so crazy close. And um, that closeness, it's amazing because you have people around you like 24 seven to be with you, but it's also like really toxic because you don't know who you are. You don't have any individuality. It's like you are the group. And I feel like we've all kind of grown up and grown out of it and become our own people. But um, like back, like freshman, sophomore year was pretty bad. I think, the best way to put it is my friendships were defining in the sense that they were not. Um, not that I didn't have any friends, but I felt like, so let's, let's, let's go through like a list. Like so my three closest friends are a couple of, you know, three guys I played Dungeons and Dragons with, and then we, you know, we study together. And they're probably the closest and truest, most consistent friends I've had. But I mean, guys at this age aren't, super mature and they they're not kind of the people that it's easy to be vulnerable around so i always attended the crave friendships with uh you know girls or people who are more interested in just being just level of vulnerability and maturity um you know which i which i couldn't find in you know male socialization and throughout high school i've had a lot of friends i thought would be like stick around like forever and I'd be you know like best friends with them and like we'd keep in touch but um, that obviously did not, did not happen like I definitely have new friends than I did um, back in freshman year but I think people that were like meant to stick around did like we're still um, close we still say hi to each other we like when we talk it's kind of like you know we we're just picking up where we left off um, but I think the friendship that I uh, Value, value today would probably be with Jessica Delag and Ariana Rodriguez, just because Ari, also known as Baby Dragon, just saying. 
Um, she's like a very real person and she's also not afraid to like stick up for you or stick, even stick up for herself. Um, and then Jessica Deleg, she's just, I think we're just really similar as people. And um, I think that has had a really big impact on me because um, with her, like, I can really be myself because she's known me for so long. Yeah. Am I supposed to say them? Probably Jonah would be a defining friendship of mine through school because it wasn't just in school, but it was also outside of school. Yeah, a couple. Uh, Daniel Davis, who I mentioned earlier, we recently had a big falling out. We're not friends anymore uh, at all. I actually egged his house yesterday. Um, Mackenzie Brent, who graduated last year. She's a very close friend of mine. Um, Sophia Cohen and I have been friends since basically I exited the womb, um, even though she was born after me, but like we were friends since before she was born. Um, I'd say those were the, those are the three biggest ones and you know, other people that like don't go to our school. Um, but those are the three biggest ones from Fox Lane. hundred percent. There's friends that may be sitting on the other side of this camera. Oh, <laughs> that I definitely want to keep in contact with all through college and all through after college in my life. And there's friends that I've been friends with and now I never want to be friends with those types of people again. And I know like, oh, you show the same like character traits. I'm gonna maybe distance myself from you. Maybe we'll be like acquaintances, but not friends. Yes, um, I feel, I, I don't hang out with them as much as I feel like I should. Um, but I feel like my best friend ever, even though we don't hang out that much, is Michael DeBono. Because, like, he was, like, probably my first, like, best, best friend. And we, like, there's, like, a point when we hang out all the freaking time and, like, talk about all of our stories and stuff. And, you know, it's just sometimes one of us gets caught up with, you know, girls stuff and... You know, we got to do one thing and the other thing. We just haven't been able to hang out. And so I, I feel like I feel like that has kind of shaped uh, who I am because we've had lots of conversations. You know, late nights that I will remember till this day. Definitely yes. One defining friendship, probably Naima. Um, I'm positive you've seen me in the hallway with her at least once sometime this year. So if I do have a defining friendship, it's probably that one. There have been, I've had difficulty with friends, basically my whole middle school, high school, I guess, um, career. Um, but recently there have been some people that I've gotten really close to that have changed my idea of friendship. Olivia McCarthy, uh, cause she helped me through a lot of stuff. And then Emma Soderberg, because uh, I learned, a, I learned, I would say, more in my friendship with Emma than I did with most other friendships I had in high school. Um, yeah, I'd say I had a couple. There was one of my friends who I've been friends with since I was two years old. I definitely, we both, definitely think that we both grew a lot over the four years. He's definitely become a lot more social, and I feel like I was able to become a part of that. So it's been awesome to see how me and him used to we were always good friends, but like we wouldn't really talk as often. And then as four years went on, especially after COVID, we became super close again. And it was really nice to be able to have that connection there. Hmm. I think that my friendship with Ibby um, definitely had some ups and downs. Um, but having her in my life made high school so special to me. Um, but yeah, also Susanna, she has been someone that is not necessarily a part of my friend group, but is there for me every second of every day and understands everything I go through. And she's always there to listen to me when I have to rant or anything. And having that outlet has meant so much to me. Defining friendship, yeah, all my friendships. I mean, I'm still friends with most of the same people and well, not necessarily. So I think that I've actually made the closest friends this year, which is interesting. And I was actually talking about this with Emma yesterday, how I wish I became close with the people I'm close with now sooner, because then I would have had more time with all of them. But I think that my defining friendships really kind of blossomed when we went to Europe that 
those five girls plus also other people outside, but like those five girls that I spent my spring break with in Europe are like my closest friends. I mean, I guess I will say like um, there are a few like my line one, for example, who I think is a very much so defining friend in my life. But I'd like to think that all my friendships are defining because they've all kind of helped me to become the person that I am today. I don't think one of them might have had more of an effect on another, but they all kind of help shape me into who I am. Did you date in high school? Yeah, too much. Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> I did. Um, I did it this guy. He was a senior, I was a freshman. I know it's weird, trust me. My mom disagreed completely with my relationship, but he was a nice guy. He, like, I'm not gonna lie, he was a nice guy. I just think that it was a waste of time. I feel like I could have been focused in my, like, I don't know, I could just spend like more hours working on myself rather than, I don't know, trying to keep a relationship that was probably gonna end by this time, which it did <laughs> because of college, but yeah. <laughs> I did date in high school. I dated two people. Um, learning lessons for me, for sure. Um, they taught me what I want to look for in a person, what I don't want, what I think I deserve. I did, and I kind of regret it, honestly, because it kind of like took away from my, my other friendships. Like once I started dating this one specific person, I lost all of my other friends and it was it was horrible because when we broke up I was like wow I really have like no one in high school I'm still dating in high school um, but I waited till the very end of my junior year to start dating um, I think you know everyone has crushes everyone has things I had a bunch of those but it wasn't until you know I finally broke out of my shell and figured out who I think I am that I could bring myself open to, you know, actually being in a formal relationship. Yes, and you. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Yes. Um, yes. <laughs> I, my first serious relationship was sophomore year, actually during COVID. Um, and it was a good six months. I, a good time, a good relationship to fill the boring time, you know. Um, and I think that's all that all it was to him, uh, but it was more to me and I soon found that out after we broke up And then I found out months later that he cheated on me and he was cheating on me So that that was a little that was that was hard to get through um, And then I was I just got out of a very serious relationship. We were together for Almost two years a year and six months or so um, Yeah, it was a great relationship great times good memories except it ended terribly and we we're on awful terms and it it definitely I'm just gonna leave it at that <laughs> I dated for pretty much all of high school I had um, two boyfriends my freshman year but I don't even consider them boyfriends compared to the boy boyfriend I had have now which I've had since the big going into sophomore year it's a different kind of relationship as like one of my girl best friends he's 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 like I'm in love with him and he he supports me in a different way and is there for me all the time and we just unconditionally love and support each other with no kind of jealousy or hate or anything like passive aggressive we've decided that we're going to break up for college but I think that He's, pr he's such a special person to me and I really hope that over break or in the future, we always say hopefully we run into each other in the streets of New York. So I, he's a really special person to me and I would not change the fact that I've dated for pretty much all of high school for anything because I've learned so much through him and can appreciate so much because of him. Yes, I did. I did date in high school. I had two long-term boyfriends. I did date in high school. I regret dating in high school. <laughs> um, well, not, not entirely. I definitely, I definitely have, haven't had high expectations and I blame like movies for that. Cause it's always like the, oh, the ones that like come to your door and they bring you flowers and like open the, the passenger side uh, door for you. Um, like take you out of restaurants. Like 
in middle school, I think that's what I looked forward to most because I also grew up with a lot of cousins, older cousins, who had like boyfriends, girlfriends, and like I'd always see them, like their significant other, like come to like family gatherings. And I kind of always thought that that would be like me. Like I thought that I would have a, a boyfriend, like, you know, freshman year, and we'd stay together and it'd be like high school sweethearts and all that. But obviously, like now, didn't happen. So we won't have a high school sweetheart, but. Uh, I think the relationships taught me a lot um, because I'm a person that puts like 100% into like a person that I love and that I care about and um, in like freshman year I think that impacted me a lot because I would like put my time towards that guy instead of focusing on myself and I think I struggled like my grades at least struggled a lot because of that um, but it was like a good like life lesson um, because little by little I had to learn that I had to put my priorities first and not like other people. Like I could still help other people, like I know that, but I also just have to learn to say no sometimes. Like I can't always be there for them because it is their life and they gotta learn eventually. Just like I have to learn that my priorities do come first. I had one girlfriend in high school, um, like sophomore year. But other than that, no, no dating. Uh, unfortunately, yes. I am satisfied because now I know uh, not fun, not enjoyable experiences. At least now, in this time frame, I am glad I had those experiences because now I know to make better decisions. Complicated. <laughs> um, like, kind of, but no. I'd say... I guess I could say yes, like the purpose of this video, like we didn't date, but it was close enough. I did. I, I met my first girlfriend uh, in uh, the freshman dance, um, freshman year. I met a girl named Kat Karoon um, for like the first time ever. I was sweating profusely because that's what I do at indoor party, at indoor dances. and. Um, yeah, I met her, you know, we started dancing, didn't even say a single word to each other, how the kids were, we like exchanged snaps. Then later that night, we were texting and stuff. Hey, you wanna hang out? Let's hang out. We dated for like a year and it was, it was cool. Um, and now I am currently um, dating uh, a girl for almost like a year. It's gonna be a year in like a month or so. We, first time we FaceTimed, it was like for like, like five hours. So it was, it was pretty cool. It, it, it started out good and it's currently going good, so. I did. I won't say names, but I did. I did. I had the classic, messy, awful, traumatizing high school relationship that I think pretty much everybody has and also has to go through in order to transform as a person. Um, which, you know, thank God that person lives far away. I'm Jewish, by the way, so. Um, but yeah, thank God that person lives far away. I dated that person and then I stopped dating and, you know, pretty much didn't have any success until uh, like this year. Nothing ever officially dating, but I did have some things here and there. When I was a freshman, I dated a senior and ever since that experience, I have not resorted to dating again. But yeah, ever since that, traumatizing experience I've kind of strayed away from dating and reverted to like an almost opposite lifestyle just out of fear that I'm gonna get hurt again <laughs> yes. I went on one date <laughs> no I didn't ever <laughs> did you date in high school <laughs> um I dabbled <laughs> I dabbled I tried my best. I worked my hardest. <laughs> no. <laughs> what was your social life like? Were you into parties? Like, what was your scene? Since freshman, I've, freshman year, my friend group, we'd go out to parties and, but we also like to hang out at home, but yeah, so yeah. <laughs> Definitely more parties. Like, I'd go out like once or twice a week and then 
like go out during the week with my like go out like to party once once a week and then like go with my friends during the week so I definitely am like a people person like to hang out with other people I would say that my friend group definitely was into partying um but I and the other people in my friend group did appreciate our downtime and our times by ourselves and I think that's something really unique with my friend group like sometimes if there was a party we were okay with saying like no tonight I just want to stay home and watch a movie like and I really appreciated that and I never really had a fear of missing out because I knew that everyone was okay and understanding of everyone else's need for downtime if that makes sense. I think you know freshman and sophomore year because of who I was friends with I you know looked into the party scene and you know drinking and things like that um, but after a little bit of experimentation which I think we all need um, very quickly figured out that that wasn't for me um, but I you know needed to experience it and I needed to try it to figure out that it wasn't for me. Yeah it definitely changed a lot throughout high school. In the beginning I was very much introverted, very quiet, didn't go out at all really freshman year um, and I didn't mind it at all and then sophomore year I started hanging out with some different people sophomore and junior year I definitely went out a lot more went to parties and this year I've you know, been kind of just hanging out with my my group exclusively I'm not a huge partier but I do enjoy like a nice social outing I'm not like scared of them you know I've never been a huge drinker I don't think I need it to have fun um, and I think that our grade a lot of the bigger parties a lot of people drink, you know, and then people have started to associate with, um, so associate me with, oh, because I don't drink, like, I wouldn't have fun at these parties, but I feel like that's just a misconception, so, yeah. Um, I didn't party much. I tried to party a couple times. Didn't work out very well for me. <laughs> it did not work. Um, I... I think socially I've improved a lot. Like I went from freshman, sophomore, junior year doing absolutely nothing like after school, anything like that. Like my life was school, sports and family and that was it. And then senior year hit and I was like, okay, I have space in my life to do other things because the cross was less intense. School was much less intense. Um, so I think senior year I really socially elevated versus in junior and sophomore and freshman year when I did very little. I wasn't really a big party person, um, kind of because I wasn't like invited to them, but I, I didn't really find myself wanting to go because it's just not really my scene. I did have a really good social life. I I hung out with friends, I had fun, I worked a lot, and I think that it really you know, helped me to be the person I am today. I'm more of a hangout person. I don't really like going to a party, mainly because my mom is home, like, waiting for me. Like, for, like she doesn't let me sleep over anywhere. Uh, she stays up late if I go out. So it's like, I don't want to make her life worse by making her stay up. I'm not really much of a party unless it's with someone I really know, um, but usually I would hang out with a person once a month, maybe outside of school. So, not really a big social person. <laughs> so our school has like the party group, you know, and I was never a part of that, but I never wanted to be. Um, I think my kind of night, my ideal night is just either chilling, watching a movie, or going out, having a fire, and sitting around the fire, but I have gone to a few parties, and they're not all they're cracked up to be, to be honest. Um, lots of fakeness and people being stupid. Um, I don't... I haven't attended parties unless they're like small friend parties um, because generally I hate most of the people at our high school um, and if they're throwing a party I don't want to see the people there or I don't want to see the person who's throwing the party. Um, so generally just very quiet. I don't like being in groups. Um, that's kind of why I stopped hanging out with theater kids because they all hang out with like huge groups. Um, so yeah, uh, I try to keep it small. <laughs> I was definitely into parties, but the thing was always about if I was allowed to go. My parents are very strict, um, like any Hispanic stereotype parent. Like, especially that I'm a girl, that just put it over the top. They're like, oh, like, you're going to go and they're going to kidnap you. And I'm like, no one has been kidnapped. Like, I think I'll survive. But obviously, you know, you got to understand, you got to obey the parents. So I always did. 
but I definitely went to like um, like hangouts. Like I always hung out with my friends. Um, obviously, my parents had to know who they were, and like they, if they could, I think they would have done a background check. But obviously, you can't do that. So I think that was good. Uh, but when it comes to like the party scene, like the drinking and smoking, like I've never really been about that. Um, but like I still go because I love to dance. Like I love dancing. I would not say I was a big partier, but you know I do more like low-key stuff I guess just hanging out with a couple people I was like half and half um, I remember I would go on spurts when I loved partying and I you know I would go for like two straight months every weekend and then there'd be points when I just you know I, I didn't really want to be around people I just wanted to stay home and I don't know play guitar which is what I usually do in my free time or play video games or whatever, but mostly guitar. And um, yeah, I, I, I really liked going to parties because I felt like I could, it, parties are like that one place where you can get that like really short term feeling of validation and stuff from other people, whether it be sexually or, you know, in like a, like conversations, like small talk, meaningless small talk. Hey, how you doing? How's life? And you know you're, you're not going to talk to them ever again. And, but you pretend like you're best friends when you see them. That's usually how it goes. Um, some people like that. Um, but I feel like, uh, you know, there was a point when I was like, okay, I think I'm, uh, I've exhausted all my love for this. Um, into partying, yeah. Uh, high school kid, like to go out to party. Um, but recently, I've been kind of realizing that I don't really need to go to every party. Sometimes I like to just stay inside, watch TV, read. Like, I don't always love to go out and do all the crazy stuff. Um, I would say I enjoyed going to parties. I would not say I was invited to many of them. <laughs> For the ones I was invited, I did enjoy myself. I have never been to a high school party, like a true high school party. I've been to little gatherings where there's been like drinking and stuff, but I've never been to like an actual high school party. And I kind of regret that a little bit because I wish that I'd gone and like experienced one at least. And most of that was because I was scared to ask my parents to go to one. The other half was that I usually was not invited because <laughs> I was not in that circle of friends? No, I would go to some parties here and there. I love to just hang out. Like, I, my favorite thing is just like, go to the turf at sunset, play some spike ball, eat some pizza, stuff like that. So, but you know, wanna hang out with other people, but in a chill manner is definitely my kind of thing. In the earlier years of high school, I didn't do as much partying. I still don't do a lot now, but like, I didn't hang out. I hung out a lot more in the earlier years of high school with a lot different with different people. Like I wouldn't hang out with the same people consistently. But now in the later years of high school, I do hang out with more consistent people. So it's not the same people every time. Or sorry, it's not the it's not different people every time. So I'm hanging out with more consistent individuals than I was earlier. And for parties, I've gone to more parties this year than I have in the past, if that counts, so yeah. Never really went to parties, usually just hanging out with my group of friends. I don't even know how to describe my scene. Um, it was kind of a mix of staying home and studying, but also having fun and going out with friends, going to parties, but I wouldn't say it was more on either side, it was kind of an even balance. I wouldn't say that I'm like a party animal per se, but uh, you know, I'll, I'll go out to the occasional party, ha have fun, and then not for the next month. I definitely like my alone time to recharge, but I love being around my friends. Um, you know, I love making new friends, uh, yeah. First half of high school, it was more studious. And then, I mean, at least as of junior and senior year, I've been going out a little bit more, um, but also because of COVID too. Um, no, I was not into partying. I kind of liked more low key hangouts with friends, like going to the movies, we did that a lot, or just like going to someone's house. I never really did the party thing ever. 
recently, pretty good, I will say, like, um, end of senior year, third, fourth quarter of senior year, great. I don't think I had a social life any other time in high school. It was very much, I would sit at my house and do nothing and wonder why no one was hanging out with me kind of thing, which, if you're ever that person, introspection. Um, I made a lot of friends that I would have in school and we would create huge friend groups that never talked because there were too many people unless we were in school. And then when we left school, we would never hang out. So I, ha I always felt like I would come to school and I would know a lot of people and I'd be talking to a lot of people and I had a lot of friends and then I'd go home and like I would know no one and I'd have no one's number. And there wasn't really opportunities for me to hang out with people. But I also kind of noticed I can change that and I was blaming it too much on other people. Did you ever feel lonely? Oh, 100%. Um, staying up until very, very late hours, doing work when nobody else is talking to you, you know? Probably the loneliest moments for me were just in my room, trying to get everything done, trying to wrap my head around everything going on in my life. Times, because COVID. <laughs> yeah, mostly around people. Mm, I would say like maybe in the beginning of freshman year, like I had my friends and stuff, but I kind of like did other stuff on the side at home that like I had to like kind of work through before I could be friends with everybody else before I could open up. So I would say like maybe a little bit freshman year, but in general, no, not really. Definitely. I, I went through a really difficult phase in my life. Um, throughout like freshman year to pretty much junior year in high school, I was really depressed, I was really lonely, and COVID didn't help. I mean like feeling lonely without COVID and then having COVID hit, it really like threw me for a loop. Yes, definitely yes. I think I felt really lonely over COVID. I felt really lonely before I met like the true friends that I have now. Like when I, like in past friend groups, I always felt like it was, it, I always had Alex, so I was never truly alone, but Alex is an amazing person, but she's busy a lot. So when the one person that you always count on is busy a lot, the one person that you love a lot, that you're not always with, so you're by yourself quite often, and I thought that was very hard. So I'm really glad that now we're all more free to be around each other, just because there's so many less commitments and responsibilities that we have. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's consistently probably the most consistent feeling I've had um, over the course of my life, but especially in high school, later on in high school, uh, was you know the sense where like I would go home, and if I didn't reach out to 20, 25 people. I wouldn't hear another person my age's words until I like basically got shoved in their face at school the next day. I mean, I, was always, I always felt like I was not related to on the level that other people relate to people their own age, which I was saying I always craved like, just I just wanna do one normal thing, somebody else. And I never felt like I ever really got that uh, from anybody. I think everybody feels lonely at some point. Um, and if you say you don't, you're lying to everybody and yourself. No. No. To be honest, no. Um, I think I always had someone by my side, and I think a lot of that comes from being so close with my mom and my sister. You know, I, even if I wasn't satisfied with my friendships or romantic relationship, relationships at the time, I always had them, and that was always a constant that never changed. Yeah. yeah. Well, there were definitely times when uh, some of my friends were at college and I felt like I wasn't as close with the people I used to be close with. And it's hard, but I think part of high school is learning to feel lonely and be okay with it. I felt so lonely, completely lonely pretty much during quarantine of 2020 when we first went into lockdown in March and that was such a low time in my life like in the snapchat one it's I think it's two years ago today seeing that it brings me back to that time when my heart breaks seeing how I was so lost and so lonely then I literally had no one like my parents were kind of weird with my phone like with using phones, I mean, like so many parents are, like they take it away at nine o'clock 
and that's when my friends would just start talking. So I felt like I was missing out on so much at night. I did, I did. Um, mainly my relationship because I was just so like, I don't know, into my relationship that I left all my friends behind and it was just like bad. Yeah, especially recently, it's been hard. Especially when you kind of lose yourself when you're in a relationship, especially that long. So you, you, you forget what it's like to be alone. Um, and you kind of forget how to be happy alone. I felt lonely after my first boyfriend cheated on me and then all my friends and I got to an argument and I didn't have any friends besides either of those. Um, besides that, no, because I mean, I do a lot of after school activities, so I'm never really alone. I think I felt lonely probably my uh, freshman year when I went through like a really bad breakup um, because it was like, I was like with that person, I dedicated myself to that person and I lost friendship because of that. So I think um, I felt lonely because I myself had pushed those people away to like keep this other person in my life. Um, but at the same time, like I wasn't alone because I still had people that cared about me. Um, so even though I felt it, like I re like looking back on it now, like I really wasn't lonely. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'd say more at the beginning of high school, just because I was kind of in the mindset that like I always need to be invited to everything. I always need to be here, do this, do that. Um, so I would feel like if I wasn't doing that, then I would feel all alone and not um, feel so great about myself. Um, but I haven't really felt like that in a while, just because I realized that I mean, spending time with myself is kind of kind of fun, awesome, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Who doesn't? I mean, it, it's definitely hard to... It, sometimes it's just coincidence where everyone happen, happens to be busy, especially with COVID. Some people were sick, so you couldn't hang out with them. So it really sucks to have some nights where you're just left at home alone, even though it's a Friday night. And... Yeah, of course, you're gonna feel lonely at points. Yes, 100%. During um, freshman, sophomore year, there were times where I felt like I had no friends and where I was just like, this sucks. And then I'd get like flashbacks to middle school and be like, wow, it's like the beginning happening all over again. But then like, I found my people, it's fine. We'll all survive, you'll get through it and I'm definitely, I'm a lot less lonely now. Yeah, definitely um, in quarantine, because I feel like it really showed you who you really talk to on a daily basis and who was going to keep talking to you and who wasn't. So I definitely felt lonely during that time period, but I also feel like I needed to so that I could like find who I am without the, the opinions of others around me. So I think it was, I was lonely at some point, but it was good for me. Yeah. Um, I guess ever since I was middle school, I struggled with friends, not really making them. Um, I guess just like, sounds sad, but keeping them. It, it's like, I've, ha I've been in a lot of different friend groups, but most of the time they only really last like a year, and then we would drift apart, and I would find a new one, and then the same thing would happen. Um, and you know, after a while, you, it makes you feel lonely. Um, but I found one that stuck, so. Yeah. I think that's like normal though. People villainize loneliness as like something that's like the bane of human existence and the, the downfall of any strong person. And I feel like you have to be lonely to learn. You can't learn constantly surrounded by people. Yeah, so the winter, of like 2020 so like December 2019 January 2020 like right before COVID hit I remember I was in a pretty poor state of mind like I didn't that's when like this literally the sunset the sun at, sun is out for like six hours a day and I had very bad seasonal depression like the weather can affect my mood so that was pretty bad it was just poor timing in the winter I didn't have a lot of connections going on I just got hurt for basketball, so I couldn't do much. I was gaining weight, I just wasn't happy physically, and it just hurt me mentally, and I would go home and just have nothing to do, and it was bad. Oof. 
Obviously, I feel like everyone feels super lonely at times, and <laughs> recently I've been feeling super lonely, honestly. Um, this is like really weird to say, but all of my best friends are in relationships right now, and I never knew how big of an impact that would have on me, but seeing my bestest of friends being so happy and so loved by another person can only like make you feel like you could have the same but you just don't and yeah lately i have been feeling pretty lonely for that reason and actually i had a taste of a relationship recently and as i was saying like as soon as that other person stopped feeling that way about me i've only like felt sad and I'll never really want to settle for anything less than that. Like, yeah, you need to love yourself and be happy doing things by yourself, but sometimes at the end of the day, you do want someone to care about every stupid detail of your week and to say goodnight to you. And not having that kind of sucks and does make you feel lonely, but it's something I'm gonna have to learn to deal with or blossom from, I guess. Yes, definitely. Um, last year was definitely a rock bottom for me um, because, you know, the, the beginning of the year started out well. And then I feel like just not going to school and being all online and stuff um, really started to catch up to me. Um, by the start of like third quarter, I like, I couldn't hand stuff in on time which wasn't that big of a deal, but then it just started all adding up. I ended up getting COVID and I was in an apartment, my dad's apartment for literally like uh, 10 days alone. It's literally like whatever, however big this room is, it's probably how big the apartment was. And I had to stay there for 10 days and that's what really screwed, screwed me up because I was alone. It was just me and my thoughts, you know, and it was, it was bad because the worst thing you can do to a person is leave them with their thoughts for a long period of time because they're going to think of impending doom at some point. What was your biggest insecurity throughout the four years? So for some reason, I used to overthink how I spoke a lot. Like I, I would, I'd be like, I sound different than other people. Like I sound weird. Like I would think that I spoke a different way or that I acted a different way or that I would just do things that were weird that I didn't like, like that nobody else would do. And I was like, I don't like that I'm not, like I just thought that I was weird. That was it, that was literally it. That's the only way to like to say it. Like I just thought that I was weird, that the mannerisms I had were weird. So that I wasn't enough for people. Like I, I just wasn't, pretty enough or I wasn't good enough, I wasn't funny enough, but I've now come to realize that it doesn't matter what other people think, it just matters what you think. Not having Snapchat made me feel like I was kind of ostracized from a lot of boys and, you know, different people throughout my grade. And it was almost like, oh, she doesn't have Snapchat, so why even bother talking to her? Which I think is absolutely ridiculous now that I look back at it. I don't think you need a form of social media to keep in touch with someone. If you really care about them, you shouldn't have to rely on any of that. I think that I never really felt secure in a certain group. Um, I bounced around a lot and I always felt just like a little bit on the outside because I never allowed myself to get so close to people because I think that part of me knew that that wasn't really right for me and that wasn't the group I was supposed to be in. Um, so I, I always felt like there was a little bit of a barrier between me and whoever I called my best friend at the time. To be honest, I'm not sure. If anything, I'd say probably my hair. Only because like, earlier in high school, I didn't know how to do it and it kind of just like woke up in the morning and was like, okay and just kept it pushing. But now that I do know how to do it, I'm not really insecure about it. So it's not as big of a deal. I don't even know if I was really insecure about it earlier in high school because I didn't know if I was supposed to be, but that would be the only insecurity I'd say I had. Probably my hair, still is. 
definitely. I've always hated my pale skin. That's always been, but like, I'm like, you know what, at this point I, I have to live with it, so um, the sun doesn't make me tan. I kind of thought people would just think of me as dumb. Like, I, I work so hard in school and I try so hard in everything I'm a part of, but I felt like I kind of gave off the perception that I was stupid. Probably my weight, just because that's always been an issue for me. Like, it's just, in my mind, it's like any social rejection is because of my weight. Either my appearance or my friendships. Like, my appearance, like my body, which is like a big one. I think I struggled with that. I struggled with that pretty badly freshman, sophomore year, and then it got better because of my second boyfriend, because he's amazing. He reaffirmed everything and made everything better. So yeah, I struggled with that. Still is a little bit of a struggle, but not as bad. And then um, another one was like FOMO. That was really bad when I was younger. Holy crap, my FOMO was terrible. Like I was so insecure about like not being in everybody's posts and stuff. But like after, after I got in this argument with my friends like and like he cheated on me, that was like a turning point in my entire life. I stopped caring about all that stuff and now I could not give a crap, which is, it's nice. Um, and then I guess like I told you this insecurity before, just like people thinking that I'm ditzy and stupid because I don't know how to change that. <laughs> 100% my biggest insecurity has been my nose. And that's the first thing that came to mind when you asked that question. But it's something that people have pointed out since middle school and something that people have pointed out literally yesterday. Like I always get comments on my nose and it's hard because I don't dislike the way I look and I love how unique my nose is, but ugh, it just pains you when it's like something I can't change about myself. And yeah, it's made me a little insecure. I think my biggest insecurity was probably like my body. Growing up, I mean, when I was a younger kid in like elementary school, I was a chubby kid. And when I started middle school, I started uh, Marlins, which is a club swim team. And I lost, um, like I got fit. Like I wouldn't say I was like skinny, skinny, but like I was fit because I had like the swimming legs and I had like, um, like a good fit swim body. And then um, I think as I grew up, like, you know, the standards of like having the flat stomach and having like, um, like, you know, the, the, summer bod like i think that got to me um well i was very short <laughs> definitely freshman year and sophomore year so i would say maybe that say it used to be kind of people like not everyone liking me i feel like i used to want to please everybody um but now my biggest insecurity is probably um, when I try and act and be someone who I'm not to either impress someone or do something. Sometimes people say I like act like a completely different person depending on who's in the room and stuff. And there'd be times when I get really insecure and I think that people didn't think I was being genuine just because like I, when I talk to people and stuff, like I usually have like this like enthusiasm that maybe when I think about it now, it isn't really genuine, but it's just natural, if that makes sense. How closed off I was because that really hurt me in the way that like people just like wouldn't talk to me because they're just like, oh, she's like quiet and probably mean, so she, we don't want to talk to her, which I'm, I'm not mean. At least I don't think I am. And I'm definitely quiet, but if we like speak and like I finally like, break out of my little like quiet shell, then I'll be like more talkative and stuff. But I'd say that was one of my biggest insecurities. I don't know. I don't really know. Um, I had a lot of insecurities, but I feel like I was able to work through them faster than a lot of other people. So like I was insecure about my nose, but I kind of got over that. It's insecure about how my body looked, but I've become comfortable with that with time. Um, but I've always just kind of felt like people either 
no, the, people weren't perceiving me the way I wanted to be perceived. And I would dress a certain way and people would still like get an image of me in my their head that I didn't want. And I was worried that people were always remembering me from middle school. And it was like something that constantly haunted me. And I felt like I was running for president in senior year and people were still remembering like what I did in seventh grade. Um, I think just insecurity was probably living up to expectations. The expectations that I set for myself and that other people set for me. Um, I have to say like baseball is a big one. I was going to be on varsity as a, as a sophomore and I like was captain on JV as a freshman. So those are pretty high expectations to set early in your career. So this past two years, as I've been going on, it's hard because I know that I can succeed even more than I have been. And that definitely pushed me to become a better player. Like I had a great year this past year because I didn't really care for the expectations that other people were setting for me. Maybe like how I would perceive myself when I'm older. Like if I would feel good about my experiences or if I had any regrets about not doing something. Offending someone. That's probably why I said sorry so often. Um, I, okay, I always was insecure that I was being really annoying because I talk a lot and I'm very loud. So I'd say my biggest insecurity would be like people not understanding my personality and just like thinking I come off as very annoying or like dominant in the conversation. It, it, it was things that kind of came and went. It wasn't anything like super specific. Um, it would just be like maybe somebody would say something which probably they didn't mean anything by and it just made my uh, head, like the, it made the wheels start spinning. But it kind of came down to at one point my, my dad, this was unrelated to insecurities, but this is a philosophy that I recommend you apply to your life. My dad sat me down. I was really upset over something and he goes, but why should you care? And that kind of made me go, oh yeah. And then I kind of just got over it. And like, I learned that, you know, if you're insecure about something, if you can change it and you can change it in a healthy way, then do it if you have the motivation. And if you can't change it in a healthy way or you don't have the motivation, don't, and then get over it. What is your biggest regret coming out of high school? Re I regret like not trying as hard in like grades, not that I didn't try hard because I definitely like did my best and like I know I did, but um, like I said, I put other people's needs before mine and if I hadn't have done that, I think I definitely could have um, gotten like a higher um, GPA or even made it into National Honor Society, which I didn't, so I think that's my biggest regret that I didn't make it. Not taking enough advanced courses to be honest. I guess I didn't take more interesting classes. Like some of the classes I definitely really loved, like Philosophy of the Wild, but um, some of them I feel like I, there were better options. I would say overthinking. I think I spent way too much time caring about what other people thought of me, how I looked for other people, but at the end of the day, nobody cares at all. At the end of the day, you are all you have when your head hits the pillow. If I could go back in time, I know it's hard to say I wouldn't overthink, but I think I would be more conscious of not caring so much. Letting my insecurities get the better of me and letting them prevent me from doing things that I may have wanted to do. It's just not having any, it's, it's, to, it's, it's spending too much time studying and trying to achieve and not enough time working slowly towards developing any relationships and to getting to the point where I can be friends with people, but also in general, that even despite what I did try to not have been able to achieve any sort of like actual friendship of anybody to not have achieved companionship to have lost the ones which I did develop. Um, not finding the people that I found this year sooner. There were lots of ups and downs. I mean, probably way more ups than downs, but if you talked to me at the time, I probably, you know, I was upset a lot of the time, but I, I don't really think I had any real regrets. I needed everything in high school to make me who I am. I don't, I don't think I would have done anything differently. Um, I mean, even ask me a few months ago during the college process, I'd probably tell you I had regrets, but you know, I'm, once I'm, I'm out of the situation right now and I've finally realized that everything needed to happen the way it happened and I don't, I don't think changing anything would make me any happier, bring me a better life because I finally realized that the 
the one thing that matters to me is my happiness. How many, I feel like if I had to do it again, there's not much I would change. I don't know if I would say I regret anything. I'm happy about all the decisions I've made because they made me the person that I am now. So all the mistakes I've made allow me to not make those mistakes anymore. So I wouldn't say I regret anything I've done. Really always doing what I'm used to doing and comfortable with. I kind of wish I experienced new things at a sooner point in high, or earlier point in high school. Um, I don't know, I think I could have picked up new tools or done new cool experiences that I would remember forever. My biggest regret coming out of high school was getting so stressed out, especially freshman and sophomore year. Like, you're gonna end up where you're gonna end up. Like, life is meant to be like that. You're, I wish that I either tried like super hard, but I mean, I'm happy with where I'm going, so I don't wish that really, but I wish that I had just taken it a lot, the school prospect a lot less seriously and I wish, obviously say I wish I did my work, but I didn't, I wish I didn't let all the stress of that get to me. You know, something that I did a lot this year was I didn't push myself as much as I usually did. Like freshman, sophomore, junior year, I was like, okay, hey, I gotta like do really good in my classes. I can't get like below a B, below like an A minus even. And I'd just be like putting all that extra pressure on myself to do well in my classes. And then this year I kind of was like, took a step back. I had multiple frees. I didn't take a single AP. I took like SLT, which is considered an advanced class, but like it's not really. So I just took like a nice chill senior year and I really enjoyed that. And I wish that I hadn't put as much stress on myself as I did freshman, sophomore, junior year. I wish I did more specific things in the arts. Cause I feel, cause I'm going to an artsy school and I'm kind of sad that I can't like do more art related things. Cause obviously like, cause I'm going to school for like a design school so I can design stuff, I guess. But there are other kids going to that school who not only design, but they also like make music and they paint and they sculpt and like they do all kinds of arts. And I'm like, oh, that's really cool. I wish I did that. Cause I didn't do, I didn't really focus on art electives after like freshman year. And I really wish I did. So if I had any regrets, it'd be that one. I would never call myself shy per se, but I definitely, there was a period of time where I wasn't confident. Um, but I think I kind of gained that confidence. So prior to me having that confidence in myself, <clears throat> I would probably have said not being confident enough to like branch out. But I mean, other than that, I mean, like I said, I, I, I'm, I, I was able to start doing that. And I think now I, I, I'm lucky to say that I don't know if I have any regrets. I mean, maybe it'll be something that comes up later in the next few years. And I'm like, God, I wish I did that. But, you know, I'm very confrontational and I'm confident. So I think, you know, I'm at the point where if like there's something that I want to say to someone, I say it. Not being more offensive. I hated a lot of people and they should know it because you don't learn with everyone liking you. And I know a lot of people hated me and I wish they were a bit more like honest and open about it because I, I'm into like a good fake conversation, love the lying, but nobody learns from that kind of stuff. And high school is purely about learning. You don't like learning socially. You're not learning that much academically. A lot of us don't find out actually what we want to do, stuff like that. And I kind of, just wish I had been more honest at times that were necessary and I had learned more about how to interact socially because I did kind of like hermit for a couple years and it really stunted my social growth in a way that I've now had to work through really quickly in senior year. I would say my biggest regret was not having my priorities in proper order. Like freshman, sophomore year, I would prioritize snapping boys, talking to my boyfriend, going to a party, doing this, doing that, but all of that stuff comes back and it builds up essentially. When your priorities are out of order, you'll really get lost in high school, I feel. And it catches up to you. 
So I definitely regret not prioritizing the right things at the right times. I think that maybe not so much a, a regret or maybe it's getting caught up in other people's advice and not doing what you actually want to do. But in the end, I'd usually do what I want to do, so it's okay. <laughs> Biggest regret, I think, is not trying as hard senior year because I had fun, but I think I could have kept my grades up a little bit better. I kind of let go because once I got into college, I kind of stopped doing everything and I like procrastinated a lot, which I know people say it's like, oh, you regret not going out if you try too hard, but I think that I could have had more of a balance where like I, I just gave up completely at the end of senior year and I feel like I could have stuck with my like academics a little bit better. Uh, my biggest regret is that uh, I didn't realize how fast it would go by. Where are you going to college and what will you be studying? I am going to Boston College and I am majoring in English and I hope to minor in healthcare policy as I go through my years. I am going to Hofstra University and I will be studying early childhood education. I'm going to the University of Chicago. I'm studying uh, applied math and economics. I'm going to Hamilton College and I will either be studying finance or biology. I am going to Franklin and Marshall College um, and I will be studying public health on a biology track. I'm going to Notre Dame um, and I'm doing computer science and mathematics. I'm going to St. John's College in Annapolis, Maryland and I do not, the school does not have majors, so I will be studying everything from math to Greek. I'm going to the University of Florida, go Gators, <laughs> and I'll be studying psychology with a minor in neuroscience. I'm going to University of California, Berkeley, and I'm deciding between studying environmental science or being more specific and in going into marine science. I'll be going to Parsons School of Design um, within the new school in the city and I'll be studying fashion design. Okay, I'm going to Wake Forest and I'm studying molecular biology. I'm going to Sacred Heart University um, and I'm going in undecided. I'm going to study engineering at Cornell. I'm going to Oberlin College and I will be studying journalism and playing lacrosse there. I'm going to George Washington University and I am currently undecided, and I have no idea what I want to do. I'm going to University of Delaware, and I don't know what I will be studying. I'm going to college at Loyola Marymount University, and I'm studying finance, and I hope to do something in finance in the uh, entertainment industry. I'm going to Drexel University in Philadelphia and I'll be studying user experience and interaction design. I'm going to University for the Creative Arts and I am studying theater and film production. I'm going to the University of Vermont and I'll be studying music technology and business. I'm going to Charles University, Prague, and I will be studying politics, philosophy, and economics, hopefully with a minor. I'm going to the University of Georgia in Athens, Georgia, and I'll be studying personal finance and business and an entrepreneurship aspect. I'm going to college at Boston University, and I'm in the School of Communications. As of now, I'm going to be studying journalism and advertising and then minoring in film and TV. I'm going to the University of Richmond, and I'm going to study this I'm going for this major that's called PPEL, which is Philosophy, Politics, Economics, and Law. I will be going to Northeastern University studying Communication and Media Studies. I'm going to UVA and I'm studying Comp Sci. In 20 years, where do you see yourself? Hmm. I want to be, I want to have my own private counseling, so I want to be like a psychiatrist, right? But I'm not, I'm not certain about this, but I want to have my own private practice where I get to choose my hours and I schedule meetings with people and help them with their problems and I have my own little office and I'll have a sweet husband who I can come home to and hopefully two kids and a dog. <laughs> um, and I think I would probably either live here or somewhere down south. I want to be traveling for sure. I want to be writing as much as I can. I would hope that I have a family 20 years, 38, yeah, 
<laughs> um, yeah, I better have a family by then. Yeah, I've always wanted kids. I, I've, it's just a lifelong goal. I see myself married with two kids, a third on the way, <laughs> and I'll be a kindergarten teacher probably somewhere in the Northeast, like where we are now. Um, maybe Connecticut or not New Jersey. I hate New Jersey. Or maybe New York. I see myself working as a neurologist. I, I have a job I love, maybe in academia. Uh, I'm doing stuff that I think improves the world in a concrete way and that I have people who I have strong relationship with. Well, I can barely see myself in one year, but in 20 years, probably decided on a career, maybe married, not sure. I'm successful business-wise, I see myself successful medical, like in the medical field. I think I definitely would love to have kids, but I also would really like to have a strong career. I actually, the person I, we did a SLT interview for Society Literature and Truth, and I interviewed this woman named Dr. Dowling, and Dr. Dowling told me that she has lots of friends who have very, very strong careers, but are also very excellent parents. So I think that's what I would love to have. And I also hope that I've, fini I've finished undergrad, I've gone to grad school or some form of grad school, and I have my own place, and I hope I'm married. That would be nice if that could be out of the way too. Hey, this year was, was really rough for me. Um, I, you know, I always have, you know, grinded academically, and I, I've always wanted to get into a really good college. And um, you know, I I was fighting for the ranking. I, you know, did all my work like crazy, and you know, a sweat if you want to say that. Um, and I mean, I, I did end up getting ranked third in my class, which is an achievement in itself. But um, when my college, um, you know process did not go the way that I wanted and I did get rejected from a lot of my top schools. I, you know, really rethought, you know, you know, dedicating all my time and academic energy to a, you know, potentially unattainable goal. Um, so I'm a little torn right now because I, there's part of me pulling me to my old self in that direction of, you know, playing society's game and just striving to um, have this academic validation and you know these awards and these rankings and these high grades and these honors but then there's part of me pulling in a direction where I just want to you know be free and be happy and travel and just run you know run through fields that's what I always say run I just want to run through a flower field in Europe um, but so like my goal ultimately was to get a PhD and become a doctor, um, specifically in global health. But now part of me just wants to be like a granola girl <laughs> and like travel and because they're they seem the most free and they seem happy and you know, the hippie life is a hippie life for a reason. But I know part of me would never allow myself to be completely cut off and you know not have goals and not you know think and just go and to just travel like I'm 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 very torn right now but I, I think that in 20 years that I could potentially achieve both in 20 years I'll be 37 that's so old <laughs> hopefully I'm not wrinkly <laughs> um I I don't know hope I don't know I really I hate the cold that's why I'm going to California, but I want to be on the beach somewhere warm. Probably, hopefully I'll stay in California. Maybe I'll be married to my current boyfriend now, or hopefully I'll marry some hot surfer boy I meet at Berkeley, <laughs> but we'll see. Hopefully um, in a cottage in the woods, doing a job that I enjoy or in prison. Dad. I think I see myself well, there's like a lot of different paths. So either working in a hospital or working in a lab because I might go to med school um, depending on how college goes. Um, and if not, I do want to be like a scientist. So hopefully in 20 years, where I'll be 38, I'm pretty high up there. 
and I've like worked my ass off. Um, and then also probably married. I hope that I have like a couple kids, like I mean maybe like three, four. Um, I always envisioned myself coming back to the district and like living in Bedford Hills, which is where I live now. Um, I really hope that by then I have a successful career and I hope that I get to spend as much time as like with my family as I can. I hope I have a bunch of dogs because I love dogs. Um, and I see myself being really happy and with a healthy family and a, a stable like you know income household and just I really hope I made my parents proud by then. Um, I don't know. I have no idea. In 20 years, I see myself with a wife and hopefully a family in a suburban area. Um, I was just driving around yesterday thinking to myself about how we live in such a beautiful part of the world. It's green everywhere, trees, plants. Um, and I'd definitely like to live somewhere like this when I grow up. I see myself going to random music stores and annoying, am I allowed to curse? Annoying the fuck out of all the employees at the music stores by spending too much time there. I see myself maybe in like the city ish or a city I don't know New York City because I've lived in New York all my life and I kind of want to go somewhere else and like I didn't live in the city long enough to remember anything or like actually experience it but maybe I'll like move there for a little bit like experience the New York City life and then I kind of want to like explore but I just want to explore at least the country that I am in a little bit more than just New York and Delaware. In 20 years where do I see myself it's definitely not going to be optimistic you know maybe selling print printers on the phone or I think it'd be like a salesman or some point because I feel like 20 years down the road I'm definitely gonna hit a fork in the road at some point and I'm definitely gonna have to like find a you know like a no-brainer job for me and I feel like that's a salesman and I feel like I'd be really good at like selling like average products like printers or like a refrigerator on the phone um, I feel like I'd be really good at that I'll either be living in a box on the streets of New York City or hopefully happily married with a stable job and a wife and children, hopefully. I would like to see myself running a business somewhere, whether that's a surf shop, whether that's a sports store, somewhere down south where there's warm weather, beaches, and I can have a nice family. <laughs> In 20 years, hopefully I'll be happy, I'll be married. I'll be 38, right? Okay, yeah, hopefully married. As of now, I don't see kids in the future, but that could change. I definitely want to be in New York City and financially stable, having good relationships with my husband and my family and having a good supportive group of friends. Hopefully some type of lawyer and I hope to have been well-traveled and continue to be traveling around the world. Um, maybe a couple of kids and hopefully married and a dog or two. <laughs> hopefully doing well for myself, hopefully in whatever um, job field that I go into, whether it's communications, whether it's something else, I'm happy, I'm surrounded by people that I genuinely enjoy being around. I hope I still have some high school friends around and I hope that I've traveled a lot and I hope that I have lived my life with the least amount of regrets possible. I really want to live in South Carolina, specifically Charleston. So in 20 years, wait, wait, I'll be 37. Okay, so I hope I have kids. I hope I'm married 
and I hope at that point I can work because I want to work but I'm also like stable or I have a family and like a husband that also works so we're stable and we live in South Carolina near the beach with kids and I feel very content and I hope I still like live near my parents and my siblings and then also still hopefully in friends with the people and friends with now. I see myself being an actor but not in the sense like I need to be famous it's just I see myself being happy and continuing what I want to do. What's the number one thing you hope to accomplish in the next 20 years? Is find a job, because everyone needs those, that is fulfilling in a way where I feel financially stable and I also feel happy doing whatever I, it is that I'm doing. People say money doesn't buy happiness, but I really want to have a lot of money. <laughs> Not so I can say that I have a lot of money, just so I can feel um, financially stable enough to like go on vacations and take a break every once in a while without having to worry about, oh, will I have enough money to pay rent next month? Uh, be able to have a house and uh, hopefully start having kids by then. I really just want to be financially stable. Like, a logical dream is to just be financially stable and be able to live a comfortable life. Probably with a family, I don't know who, but like with a family, hopefully. A dream, kind of in 20 years I think I would like to be famous I don't know I've always like even when I was a little kid I wanted to be famous and not exactly knowing what for but for something I don't know I just feel like that would be really cool and I think I could pull it off I don't know <laughs> I definitely like money but I also really enjoy what I do so I definitely want to keep enjoying the work that I do finding a career that is also part of a passion for me I just, something that's so big to me now, and I think will be big to me for the rest of my life, is to just inspire people. I love, I, I, once I did this webinar where I spoke for the environment, and I just remember seeing other kids' eyes, they, like, they lit up, and I love that feeling, and I'm still so young, I don't know like anything yet, and I hope that as time goes on, I can get people to be inspired and love the environment and the ocean as much as I do because I am so passionate about it and think it's something so important and I hope I can see people's eyes light up as much as I mine do when I think about stuff like that. Oh definitely like career based um, just getting like getting as far as I can in my career and like being successful in my field like whatever it is um, and then also just like making sure that I end up actually loving what I do and if I don't love it then just like drop the sunk costs and like move on and find a new job. I hope to well definitely get my bachelor's um, if I pursue teaching get, getting my master's um, I th think my what my biggest accomplishment would be is like you know starting a family and um, like settling down with like a, a great significant other like somewhere around here like I said um, but also um, watching my siblings grow up there right now my brother is about to turn 10 and my sister will is well is seven and well in 20 years they'll be like 30 and 27 so I hope that I was able to teach them and be a good enough role model for them to succeed um, I definitely hope to find a job that I love. I know journalism, sports journalism, doesn't really rack in that much cash. Um, but if I'm happy doing it and I love what I'm doing, then I'll be content with uh, what path I go down. I want to make myself and the people around me happy. Um. But yeah, I want to live a fulfilled life, and if I have kids by then, I hope to, like, raise them well and raise them to, like, in an open home. Like, just come to me about whatever, and I don't want you to feel scared. I don't want you to feel pressured. I don't want you to be, like, nervous to tell me whatever it is. If you guys are watching this, I still stick to this right now. <laughs> I hope I can 
you know, uh, make enough money to support myself, obviously. I, I hope that, um, you know, I'll be able to find a love in my life, a healthy love. I wish to have kids. I would love to have kids. I, you know, because I, I know for a fact that if I have kids, they wouldn't turn into brats. I would, I would, you know, teach them. I'd show them all the coolest music ever, so that they can show their friends first, and then they'll be the cool ones first. Um, I hope I just have really cool kids. Like my dream would be. It, it kind of ties back to the music thing. The whole reason I started making music is because. Uh, one particular album, Blonde by Frank Ocean, kind of inspired me. Like I said, that album pulled me out of a dark place. And um, it kind of inspired me to make music to help pull people out of dark places. And I hope that maybe one day I can make an album that does for someone what that album did for me. I want to do a clinical study that will change an industry. And I want to have a profound effect on people who are hurting in a way that helps them improve themselves without being like a pyramid scheme. Because I know a lot of like, this, those speakers be like, I've helped a million people, the drug dude that we had. Oh my God. I just want to do something and for people to be like, this helped me in some way and to be able to help. I know that's like a, such a cheesy thing, but I really just want to help people. The number one thing I hope to accomplish is finding someone else who fits me well and that I can share my passions and enjoyments with. Just starting up a family, I'm 18 now, so by the time I'm 38, I hope I can have kids, I hope I can have a beautiful wife, and I can hope I, I can ask to have a loving family. I really hope that I find my passion within the next 20 years because throughout high school, I've been trying to find that one thing I just love with all of my heart, but I can't help but think like, I'm spreading myself too thin and just like finding a strong like for many things, but I haven't yet found my passion. So I'm really hoping throughout college and the next 20 years, um, me and my passion will align. Creating a career that makes me happy. To learn about as many people and cultures as I can. Honestly, just like being, like not being successful, but like having a family and working really hard at the job that I'm gonna do based on what I'm studying in college. Like I really wanna stick with it and not just get a degree and not use it. So I hope that I can work for myself for a while before I can settle down and have a family. Just to be happy. Happiness. I just wanna be happy. Like that's all I want, you know, so. What is your biggest fear for the future? The fact that I don't know it. Getting out of college or in college by my senior year not knowing what I want to do or not knowing where to go from there. I, again, I think my, my biggest fear is, is living, living a lie and living a life that I don't necessarily want and that I'm just, you know, in a way lying to myself because it's what I'm in a career or a life that society deems as, you know, important and, you know, high rank, such as a doctor. I, I don't want to do that just because it's what, what seems like the most, you know, the, the biggest option for me. I want to live a life that I'm choosing because I want to choose it. And I'm scared that, you know, like I did in high school, I will get caught up in, you know, what society deems as the, the best thing to do. That's, that's what I'm scared of. I, I want to be able to drop everything and go, but I'm scared that I won't allow myself to do that. Not finding a job that I'm not, you know, waking up every day and being like, oh my God, I actually can't wait to do what, whatever it is that I'm, whatever job I'm, I have, you know. Not loving what I do. Either getting married with like while having regrets and not really traveling or experiencing what I wanted to before I settled down or um, 
Yeah, I'd say kind of just settling too quickly. I think my biggest fear is losing the people that I love. <sighs> that my my parents die. <laughs> it's so like dark, but it's just like true. Like I don't know what I would do without them. Losing the people that I love. Well, I'm going. I mean, the next most direct future for me is college, and I'm so intimidated by Berkeley. <laughs> like. I'm so happy to go there, but I already, I'm so scared my imposter syndrome is going to be bad. Either, either mediocrity or getting eaten by mermaids. Spontaneous human combustion. Um, probably industrialization, like the growth of technology, environmental death, like stuff like that. Uh, probably that I'm going to be unsuccessful and not find my passion and just be like unhappy. So being in a situation where like, I can't support myself or something. Biggest fear is that people will not reciprocate the, um, the effort I put into being friends with them and the emotional connection, the reaching out, the, um, uh, that stuff. People not putting the same amount of effort in that I do. I guess fear is being forgotten, but I'm definitely going to be forgotten because I'm probably not going to do anything like worth being remembered for. Um, but other than that, I'd say my biggest fear is regret, which it leads to like what I want to accomplish, like not leaving anything undone. Like I feel like if I regret, re regret. <laughs> Like, a bunch of things from my teen years or from my college years or from my, like, early 20s, whatever, my childhood, then that's going to suck. And I'm just going to, like, look back and be like, oh, why didn't I do that? I definitely could have done that. Why didn't I do it? That kind of stuff. My biggest fear is that I won't accomplish what I want to accomplish. That would be my biggest fear. Or that I, um do something other than what I want to do like I get trapped in a job that I don't want to do only because it's like beneficial I would hate to do that and I would that's my biggest fear is that I can't do what I want to do in the future feeling stuck in a life that I that I wouldn't have chosen or maybe feeling stuck in in a place where I feel like I could have done more being in a place where I didn't do what I wanted to do and got stuck in like a nine to five or something like that and I didn't get to fulfill my dreams. I'm self-destructive and I think that I might be uh, burning my own bridges a lot of time and I don't realize it until it's too late. And I think that I'm going to ruin a lot of my own opportunities and create like scenes in my mind that are not accurate and then hurt myself. So my biggest obstacle I won't say is like anybody else or any institution, it's probably myself. <laughs> uh, this is so scary, but like not being happy. I feel like there are so many big life decisions coming our way, like in college and post-college and one wrong move could really determine the trajectory of your future and maybe pursuing one field of work will not make you happy whereas the other one would have made you more happy and I'm just so scared to make the wrong decision and not end up the happiest I could be. Here, probably just like not accomplishing what I want to accomplish or like losing touch with people because I fear that once everyone goes their separate ways that we're never going to find our way back but I really hope that I can still be friends with everybody and still like, have, be on good terms with everybody from high school too. Um, I can't say that I really have many fears. I'm a believer in, in the Christian faith. I trust in God. I trust in my plan moving ahead. And I'm not really, can't really say that I'm scared of everything because I know that everything that will happen is supposed to happen. What's something you wish someone had told you at some point throughout high school? I wish someone had told me that I could ask for help. To uh, try more things in high school. That I was doing a good job.
wish some of my teachers, because it would have been more coming from them, told me that grades do not make up a worth of a person because it always hurts when you get bad grades. But, you know, I le you learn that as you go along in high school. Attractiveness, like, is currency, but it doesn't matter that much outside of high school. Uh, it doesn't matter uh, how much you study um, or where you're going to go to college, what career you're going to have. Uh, it's not going to make you happy. Um, you're not going to feel good once you're done in the college. You're not going to turn around and re-enter the world and say it's time for me to have friendships and just get them. That's not what happens. You have to fight really hard for it and you're still not going to get them maybe. The not like other girls like ideology is a horrible one to have. Don't do that. That's not like you see other people are having fun. It's okay to go have fun. Like you don't have to shut yourself up. You don't have to like try to like things that you don't like just because you think that's what you're supposed to do. You don't have to be obsessed with validation from adults. Like just go like be yourself, relax, please relax and have fun. Relationships. Instead of taking it group by group and looking at people as more of a status, I think one of the most important things I learned in high school was to take it person by person in who you meet throughout high school because that will teach you what you actually want in a friend and what you actually want in a relationship. Just breathe. <laughs> Just, you know, stop and look around and, you know, realize that everything's going to be okay. I know that's very cliche, but everything really is going to be okay and you know goals change dreams change and that's okay that I shouldn't base my decisions off how I think other people will react because I think there's a lot of things a lot of people that will th you think will think differently of you if you do something you want to do and I think it's a horrible way to live and I think I realized that at some point um, but whether that's like joining a club that people might think is weird or hanging out with people who your friends might think, like, oh, that's weird. Um, I think it's all kind of dumb, and I think you should do whatever you want. You only really need one or two good friends. You don't need to post every stinking thing, you know? That I've gone to, like, enough damn parties, like, I do not need to go to anymore. There's no FOMO. It's, like, whatever. That and um, also that I was, like, very lucky to be myself. I feel like I wasn't grateful enough for my life because... I was very lucky. I have a good family and I have good friends. And just like, I don't know, throughout high school, like you learn more about other people and you learn how they're just, it's just like everybody has their own insecurities. And so I feel like I just wasn't grateful enough for everything that I had. I wish someone had told me that I was not alone. Um, I think at the beginning of high school, I kind of bottled everything up inside and didn't really feel comfortable talking about anything. Um, but throughout high school, I kind of made closer friendships with students and teachers that I could talk to, which helped a lot. Don't feel bad if you did your best. Um, if you failed at something and you weren't trying, that's on you. But if you tried your hardest and still couldn't do it, don't worry about it. But no one cares. Um, I say that and it's very uh, broad, but like um, being on social media and stuff, you know, since I've been in like fifth grade has like, like implanted in my head that everyone cares about you. Um, but the truth is they don't. Everyone cares about themselves. They don't give a crap about you. Stop listening to other people's opinion. Just do it, but not in the Shia LaBeouf way. Just like, Say what you want to say, do what you want to do, um, and make friends with people that you don't think you'd be good friends with, because sometimes you can judge a person before you speak to them, and then you speak to them and you're like, this is the coolest person ever. Nobody's who they look like, because you're only ever getting like a snapshot of somebody. Um, when you, even like your best friend, there are moments that they're thinking things that you don't know. And there's sometimes that they think about something and they forget it or experiences they don't tell you. And every time you look at someone, you're only seeing a snapshot of their life. And not to say that in a way of like, treat everyone how you would like to be treated and you don't know what someone's going through because, mm. um, but like people are going to judge you based off of what they see. You can completely lie about who they are, you are and they'll believe you. I was very ab effectively able to do that with adults this year 
which has been a pride and joy, but I wish I was able to like sell myself this way when I was younger and I wasn't like, um, I wasn't like harming the way people looked at me by not being in control. Um, take the chill pill, especially my first two years. I wish that like nowadays I'm able to realize when I'm stressed out and I can say like, all right, dude, like, should you be so stressed about this? Like, it's a stupid assignment. Like, don't worry about it. You're gonna do it. I wish that someone could have just told me that three years earlier and I'd have been able to comprehend myself and learn about my own emotions more. So not have gotten all riled up over the silly stuff. I wish someone had told me that not everything will be handed to you. And although people say everything will work out the way it's supposed to work out, I don't buy that because I genuinely believe how hard you work for something will determine the outcome. And that's something I didn't really live by in high school. I kind of went with the flow. I kind of always thought I'd end up at an amazing school and everything would work out. But genuinely, like right now, I can say that that's not the case. I really wonder like if I put 100% into everything I did where I would end up now. And having that lingering thought in my mind kills me every day. So, yeah. I guess I wish that at some point someone would have called me their best friend. Don't get too caught up in, in drama because it won't matter in like a week. The grades don't define you and the or at least for college, you'll end up where you're supposed to be. I think, well, people have told me this, but I think that I kind of didn't really believe it, but I think that say, when people give you the advice that everything will work out because it happens for a reason, it's so true. And I think that when something went a little bit off track or didn't work out the way I wanted it to, I kind of made it a big deal, freaked out. But I think that everything did work out for the better, like who I'm friends with, what happened in my like school career, what I'm studying, where I'm going to college, like all of that ended up working out. But I just needed to trust the process and I wish someone told me that. I wish someone had told me or that I listened to them when they t told me to not care about other people's opinions as much as most teenagers do because I mean, I don't know, like 20 years in the future, if teenagers are still gonna care about people's opinions, I think that they will. Um, but I definitely saw a big change during quarantine where, and I don't know if this was just like gonna be like our generation thing because I don't know if like 20 years from now, kids are gonna be going through quarantine halfway through their high school years. And like during that time, I was able to like self reflect and like think about myself and like realize things that I was doing just like to please other people versus things that I was doing that was like actually stuff that I enjoyed and stuff that was like true to myself. And I wish that somebody had told me to do that sooner rather than like when we were all forced to do it. And then I feel like I changed for the better once we got out of quarantine. I stopped really caring about like what kind of clothes I wore to school or like the trends that were going on or if my hair didn't look right or my makeup or whatever it was. And I felt like a lot less pressure to like fit in and be like that like high school, like, I don't know how to explain it, but yeah. Rank your high school experience on a scale of one to 10. Uh, two. This sounds so sad. Three? <laughs> Five. A six. Six. Mm, probably a six or a seven. 6.5. 6.75. Probably a seven. It was way better than average. I don't want to say that I was miserable the whole time. And when I was miserable, it was basically because of COVID. A seven. <laughs> Go with a solid seven because I wish I wasn't home all of my junior year, so that's why I'm bumping off those three points. 7.5. A seven, 
eight-ish. Seven or an eight. Solid eight. I would give it an eight. Eight and a half. Eight and a half. Yeah. I would give it a eight and a half. I'd give it an 8.9. A nine. Um, because I would have said 10 if COVID hadn't happened. Definitely like a 9.5. Nine and a half. 9.5, 10. I thought it was a lot of fun. 9.9. .9. I would say 10. Just because I, I loved high school. I think that although I wasn't just like popular or like didn't do the stereotypical party high school thing, I still had a good experience. And I like picked friends that I really like and I feel comfortable around. And I'm just very satisfied with the teachers I had, with the classes I took, the people I was with the whole time. I just really liked it. I would honestly give it a 10, just probably because I don't know a better high school experience. Like this was my high school experience and I'm happy with it. So I would give it a 10. Hope you guys all turn out well or accomplish what you want to accomplish. We all worked so hard and been through a lot, so. All right. I would say um, our grade is definitely pretty high achieving and accomplished grade. And I think everyone's going to be very successful in the future. I want to say that I wish everybody was more inclusive in our school and our grade, like, especially in our grade. I feel like a lot of people are clicky, very clicky, and I think, I really hope they change that when they go to college. Just like kind of open up and meet people from different backgrounds, because I think that's very important. Like, you know, just kind of putting discrimination aside, putting any stereotypes aside, like just be inclusive and be friends with everybody, I don't know. <laughs> um, go be happy, try your best. Um, take, take some time out of your day to realize how to be as effectively altruistic with the ability and time you have. Um, and please stop for a second and think about how your actions, not only how do they affect the world, but how do they affect everybody you know, and just try and as much as possible to make it through everything that happens to you and to make it through in such a way that you bring in and heal with every action you should be trying to heal. Oh, I, I'm so cringy. I was going to say the young Donna to it that goes, life is short, the world is wide. I want to make some memories. Like that one. I love that quote. Just that quote in general. I don't want to sound mean, but like nobody cares. Stop posting everything. Like it just a lot, just fakeness. I feel like it's everywhere. Just be genuine and sincere. Um, I'm going to unfollow all of you, so please don't try to find me in the future because you will not be able to. You know, our class is a big class, and I think it's a very diverse class. Um, and I think a good message would just to be like, you know, appreciate that, like the time that we've spent together and like appreciate the good memories and the bad memories. And remember that, you know, we all, whether we went through it in different ways, we all went through high school and that we all are connected kind of by this district and whether we are like we definitely are all different people we're all unique people um but something that i go by now and i hope that our class remembers is that normal is boring and if you're just like this you know average person that just you know like predictable and all that like you know that's boring and it's okay to be different, it's okay to be loud, and it's okay to be maybe even obnoxious, and it's okay to be like um, outside of your comfort zone. So I hope that, I mean, I know that a lot of us are like that now, um, and I hope that we all keep being like that, and we all keep remembering that normal is boring. I'd say try new things, meet new people, um, try and go out of your comfort zone, and I think that most of the time you'll like it. I'd say do things for your own enjoyment because they make you happy, not for other people. If doing things to help other people makes you happy, then do that. But don't do things for other people because you think they want it from you. Do things for you. Maybe be more inclusive because 
coming from someone who like wasn't in like a solid friend group or wasn't it was just like a floater between friends I felt like I had friends but I didn't like I knew I had friends but I didn't feel like they actually cared or they actually like were my friends I felt like they were going and like talking bleep behind my back can I curse yes. <laughs> okay <laughs> they were talking shit behind my back <laughs> and um it just like I feel like a lot of people say our grade is so like inclusive and that we're all like friends with each other but I feel like we could have been like even more so friends with each other. Nothing really matters. I mean, high school, it doesn't matter that much. Everyone kind of goes about their lives in high school thinking that it's the most important phase in their life. Like whatever they do in high school will define them for the rest of their lives. But I think we really need to like take a step back and realize that high school is it's four years of our 80, 90 years on this earth, like live it like there's no tomorrow, but also live like you're looking at the big picture. I would just say that I think personally, our class, class 2022, is one of the closest grades. And I think that we all kind of get each other and get along. And I think that I've seen it with other different grades that I just think our grade is very close in a way that's unique so i think our grade is very close and i think that it's cool that kind of everyone not that everyone hangs out with everyone because there are still cliques and groups but i just think personally that everyone can get along when we're all put in the same room does that make sense yeah and like i feel like i've talked about that with other people and it it's very evident even to teachers or to people from other grades that like our grade is kind of really good and i just love our grade so that's the message i have for them uh we should all meet new people only because I feel like we've been together for so long and it's the same people and we've been, we don't really get new kids a lot so I think if anything we should all go meet new people and then come back later and be like hey what's going on you know meet up later after we've experienced more I would say um, I know you told me that a lot of people had said that they had felt lonely at some point during mm -hmm. high school I think I would tell everybody to learn to enjoy their own company um, and think of themselves as their own best friend because that helps you in everything, in you know, feeling happier and accomplishing your goals. Um, and it just, I think it just makes things easier. Everybody please, at every high school reunion for the next 50 or so years, just until we all die, when you see Daniel Davis, refer to him by Big Cheese. I tried to get this to be the nickname thing in the yearbook. It's not his actual nickname, but you need to start calling him Big Cheese. You need to start calling him Big Cheese. Why didn't y'all vote for me for senior class president? I'm salty, no. Um, uh, continue working. You're not gonna be, we're still young, and we would like to believe that we are developed and mature and we're finishing some sort of growth or we're going to go to college as who we are. Do not be afraid to change. Do not be afraid to grow. Do not be afraid of situational relationships and the fact that not everyone will be permanent and you have to be comfortable with that. Um, and when you learn to not be anxious about everything happening in the future and to focus on the now and your own happiness and what you can do to improve your life instead of worrying about I have a test so and so long, or for a lot of people who are in relationships now, my relationship might end at the end of the summer and that's distressing to me. Once you let that stuff go, your life becomes exponentially better. Um, trust in your plan. There's always a plan for you no matter where you go, what you do. Just believe in your faith, believe in your passion, and believe in yourself that everything will be all right. I would say that I hope you guys had as good of a high school experience as I did. And if that's not the case, I hope you guys find your people and your passion and find what you love in the next upcoming years. And I also would like to say that although it seems like there's like a hierarchy in school, that that's not the case. We were all individuals and we all worked through so much and faced so much adversity. 
And I'm genuinely proud of everyone that is going to be graduating. It was fun. Well, I would say that I love everybody that we've grown up with and that it's been a long, a long 13 years, but I can't imagine my life without any of them. Um, and that I know that all of, because I mean, we, even though we have such a large grade, we, I feel like we know everybody. And I feel like every person has the potential to like be successful in their own way. So I hope that they all go out and do that. I would say that the most important thing you can do in life is to try to understand people the best you can. Try to be an empath when you really, every part of you really doesn't. This is a really cool project. I like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Cool. Yeah.